Intuitive Machine successfully landed on the moon on Thursday, February 22nd, 2024. This is the first successful private moon landing ever and the first U.S. spacecraft to successfully soft land on the moon since the end of the Apollo program. Here is everything you need to know about what happened. If you were following the landing on Thursday, you might have noticed that Intuitive Machines moved the time quite a bit. Here is why that happened. Odysseus's landing was originally scheduled for 5.49 p.m. Eastern, but it changed multiple times throughout the day. It wasn't clear exactly why at first. It moved earlier to 4.30 p.m. and then earlier again. And then finally, Intuitive Machines delayed the landing to later, 6.24 p.m. Eastern, and that one stuck. It turns out that Odysseus actually entered the moon in an elliptical orbit on February 21st, rather than circular. The team had to perform a correction maneuver to put the spacecraft in a circular orbit, and that was successful, but that's what moved the landing time earlier. But then there was more trouble. The laser rangefinders on the spacecraft weren't working. These are crucial for landing. Much of the landing process is automated, and these laser rangefinders provide information to the lander's navigation algorithms. They're important for controlling guidance during descent, so as you can imagine, the spacecraft can't land without them, at least not successfully. But some quick thinking solved the problem. As I mentioned in my previous video about the mission, Odysseus is carrying an experiment with NASA LIDAR aboard. It's called the Navigation Doppler LIDAR for Precise Velocity and Range Sensing. And it's basically a guidance system designed to measure altitude, direction, and speed during landing. The system wasn't supposed to be mission critical. The intention was just to test the system on the lunar surface, but it turned out to be crucial to Odysseus' successful landing. With time running out, the engineers at Intuitive Machines wrote a patch that would allow the spacecraft to use NASA's LIDAR system instead of its own laser rangefinder, uploaded it to the spacecraft, and waited to see if it would work. It did, and then they were able to proceed with the landing. But that's why the landing time got pushed back a couple of hours. They allowed Odysseus an extra orbit of the moon to give intuitive machines time to troubleshoot the problem and find the fix. Odysseus entered powered descent about 10 minutes before the scheduled landing time. Everything was fully automated at this point. The team at Intuitive Machines knew that there might be drops in communication, so they configured the spacecraft to handle exactly what it needed to do locally. The team, and those of us at home, were just along for the ride. Everyone knew at this point that the spacecraft was going to land. It was just a question of whether it would be a planned soft landing or a crash into the lunar surface. The landing time came and went, and while we knew there would be a delay before the team got confirmation of the landing, it was much longer than the 15 seconds that we'd been told. And we're tracking here in the broadcast booth. The clock has reached the expected. May take a minute for comms to reestablish. Stand by. One minute passed, and then two. No word from Odysseus. All stations, this is MD. Please look back through your logs and confirm the last information you had, and we'll determine this is a comm outage. The team at Mission Control began working the issue as a communications problem. They assumed that Odysseus had indeed soft landed successfully on the moon, but was having trouble getting a signal back to Earth. Novacy uses four antennas placed at the top of the lander that are designed to capture these communications. But we did expect this, we talked about it, that this is a communications challenge if Odysseus was intact but didn't have communications with Mission Control, it was designed to power cycle every 15 minutes and switch to a new dish location until it regained contact. Usually space missions use the Deep Space Network, which is NASA's array of radio antennas located in Madrid, Spain, Goldstone, California, and Canberra, Australia. This is operated by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, but it basically supports communication with all spacecraft outside of Earth orbit no matter the country. Except Intuitive Machines is doing something different. They're using their new network for communication, the Commercial Lunar Data Network. It's a private communication network for lunar missions specifically developed by Intuitive Machines. It has ground stations across the world, including in the UK and Australia. While it was tested during and successfully tracked NASA's Artemis 1 mission, it's still new. 
As intuitive machines worked what they presumed was a comms issue, they were trying to make sure that antennas were in direct line of sight with their network of ground stations on Earth. That's good ground network, good for box scan. Make that go. Yeah, that was good confirmation of the process that we were very familiar with, talking about the attitude of the lander, making sure that those antennas are within direct line of sight with Earth stations. As well as pointing addition in the UK towards what they thought was their final landing site. Team, we're going to confirm our pointing vector with our antenna. Part of this mission is testing the robustness of the commercial lunar data network and working out the kinks. But the good news is everything worked the way it was supposed to. Signs of life, we have a return signal we're tracking. About 10 minutes after the expected landing time, Mission Control announced that they had detected a faint signal from Odysseus's high gain antenna. We're picking up a signal from our high gain antenna and uh, transmitter. It's faint, but it's there. So stand by, folks. We'll see what's happening here. At that point, as the team worked to boost the signal, the mission director confirmed that the team had achieved a successful landing on the moon. Houston, Odysseus has found his new home. It might have seemed a little premature, but the reasoning is basically that if the craft hadn't soft landed, if it had crashed into the moon, there would be no signal because the spacecraft wouldn't be intact. This meant that Odysseus successfully made it to the lunar surface. At 8.25 p.m. Eastern on Thursday, Intuitive Machines confirmed that they were in contact with Odysseus and that it's sending back data. The spacecraft is solar charging successfully and it does have good telemetry, which means it's communicating information. We're still getting information on its precise location. Intuitive Machines shared this photo, which was taken during descent. It's about 10 kilometers above the surface of the moon, 200 kilometers or so from the intended landing site. But it shows us just how difficult the surface around the landing site is, which will make what I'm about to say next a little less of a surprise. What's interesting is that while Intuitive Machines did confirm previously that the spacecraft was upright, it's actually tipped over. The lander touched down at six miles per hour vertical speed, but its horizontal speed was two miles per hour. So they're not exactly sure what happened because they're still getting information on the health of the spacecraft, but one of the legs might have gotten caught. At the press conference on Friday afternoon, Steve Altimus, CEO and co-founder of Intuitive Machines, showed us exactly what attitude they think the lander is at. Initially, they did think it was upright because the tanks were reading gravity, but overnight they realized the spacecraft actually had tipped over. Again, this doesn't seem to be a huge deal. They confirmed that the experiments are working properly, but we'll see if it has any sort of lasting effect. So what's next for Odysseus? We're still getting information on its precise location, but so far the spacecraft appears to be healthy. Tim Crane, who is the mission director, but also is Intuitive Machines' chief technology officer, said that the vehicle performed flawlessly. They are still working on downloading images, which is what I'm really looking forward to. On its way down, Odysseus basically threw a camera called Eagle Cam outside during descent in hopes that the tiny CubeSat camera system would take pictures. We'll see if that happened. Whether it did or not, this is really an amazing achievement for intuitive machines, and I'm very excited that it worked.